right guys, let's start to put the central limit theorem to use. Uh, we're gonna start with a chapter six problem and then work ourselves up to a chapter seven problem. So as I read this, be on the listen for buzzwords and what is the variable in this problem? Right, so a soft drink bottler claims that on average, cans contain 12 ounces of soda. Let X denote the actual volume of soda in a randomly selected can. Suppose that X is normally distributed with a standard deviation of 0.16 ounces. Sketch a, graph, sketch a graph of each situation and label the axes. All right, what's the distribution of X? And can we calculate a whole bunch of probabilities? All right, so let's, let's see if we can make this work, okay? So first of all, what was the variable in this problem? Well, if you look at the numbers and you look at the units associated with it, right, we see 12 ounces and 0.16 ounces. So we're talking about ounces of something, right? That's a weight, and it says it right here. It's the volume of soda in a randomly selected can. So let's just start taking note of some important phrases, right? I see average, 0.12 ounces, right? I see standard deviation of 0.16 ounces. All right, I see normally distributed. And the other thing that I wanna point out, right? Here's the actual volume of soda, that's my variable. All right, so when I say something like, what is the distribution here? All right, if we look, right, what is the probability distribution? Right, I can make a graph, which I will, but really I want that, that um, symbol, right? We want the squiggles. So what was the distribution? Well, soda volume is normal in shape with an average of 12 and a standard deviation of 0.16. Okay, and actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight the variable here. It didn't really work much better to underline it. I'll just highlight it, that's fine. Okay, so just with that information, before I even get to the probability, let's mark up our graph. So we have that, uh, we know what that looks like. So at this point, I'm just talking about a can of soda, right? In a randomly selected can. I am not taking a random sample of 12 of these things. I'm looking at one can at a time. So I am on the population distribution. I'm gonna label this X, all right? Under the peak would be the number 12. And again, this is, if I'm labeling this, this is soda volume in ounces. All right, actually, I'm gonna scooch that up. It's getting close to the, the peak of this one. And I wanna make sure we know what, we're on the top graph. All right, so this is volume in ounces. All right, volume's a numerical variable. It's continuous numerical. We measure volume, we don't count volume. And even if we weren't sure, as soon as it says normally distributed, you know what your shape is gonna look like. We've got probability here on the y-axis. And we, we did this in chapter six, but let's go three up, three deviations up, and three deviations back from the mean. See where that gets us. Actually, I should space these out just a little bit more. I wanna try and stay symmetric. I'm not always perfect when I make these graphs. All right, let's scale the x-axis. Let's see what we have. So I'm going by deviations of 0.16. So we will do 12 point plus 0.16. And this is gonna be the number 12.16. When I add another 0.16, we are at 12.32. And when I add another 0.16, we are at 12.48. And again, just like chapter six, you don't have to label all of these. I just, I just want you to see them. So let me go the other way and subtract some deviations. So we get 11.84. We get 11.68. And then we get 11.52. There we go. Okay. Now I'm looking at one can of soda at a time, right? This says X. I wanna specifically note, it does not say X bar. We're not on a sampling distribution yet. This is a chapter six problem. So, so far, this is a chapter six problem. Okay, let's start with the X axis. So if I look at it, I need to go from on my X axis of 11.96 to 12.08. Let me grab my ruler. So 11.96, I think it'd be somewhere around here maybe. I'm just guessing. So 11.96, this is super cramped. All right, 12.08 is gonna be somewhere around here. All right, 
then I want to shade everything in between that because it's that's what the rule says. All right, so let's let's go see what this is. So when I look at that, oh, that looks to be about 20, 25% of my curve, if I'm just guessing, all right? And I, I, it's not my best graph, but okay, how about, this is definitely less than 50%, all right? So if I want to figure out this probability, right, we know we're in this column on my trait table, and it says to calculate a probability, use normal CDF. And again, this is just for example. This isn't even the exact format I'm going to use because I don't have a strictly greater than probability that I'm calculating, but I'm definitely going to use normal CDF. So here I'm going to say this is equal to normal CDF of low, high, and our mean was 12, and our standard deviation was 0.16. So let's see what that's getting me. Okay, so let me clear this out. We'll go normal CDF. Low of 11.96, high of 12.08, mean was 12, I deviated on average by 0.16, and I'm looking at about 29%. All right, so I said 2025 when I was just guessing by eyeballing it, I was a little bit too low, but 29%. Either way, it's still definitely less than 50%. So that's saying that if you're bottling these soft drink cans, and you supposedly have 12 ounces on average, then about 29% of the time, the cans will have somewhere between 11.96 ounces of soda and 12.08 ounces of soda. Okay, great. So with that, now let's calculate the likelihood that I have less than 12.08 ounces of soda. All right, so I'm gonna scale this the exact same way, but for, for time's sake and ease sake, I'm not gonna write all of these numbers out. I'm only gonna write the relevant ones. So again, X here, I'm only looking at one can, right? This is not an X bar, this is just an X. So we've got volume here in ounces. All right, we knew 12 was gonna be below the peak. And I'm gonna just line this up so it matches. This would have been 12.08. All right, now I wanna go less than or equal to that number. So I actually gotta shade all of this in. It's a much larger proportion, all right, much larger area under that curve. Okay. So now when I look at it, I mean, again, I don't know the exact number, but it, it's got to be larger than 50% because I'm, I'm on the other side of my average. So I'm thinking like 60, 65%. That seems like a, a good enough guess. But as I go to do this, I'm still going to go low, high, mean, standard deviation. Now keep in mind my low is negative infinity over here, right? Because I went all the way down. So I'm going to write normal CDF. Now, instead of typing in negative infinity, we have to type in negative 1E99, high 12.08, mean was 12, standard deviation was 0.16. So let's go see what this number gives me. Negative 1E99, we got 12.08 as the high, 12 is the mean, and 0.16 is the standard deviation. And I'm seeing about 69%. That's great, that's, that's reasonable. I knew it was gonna be larger than 50. So my number is matching my graph, great. So again, those are chapter six problems, right? We're on the population distribution. I'm looking at one can of soda, just one, va one X, right? Or an X value, not an average. And I, I want the likelihood that a can of soda is between, a can of soda has a volume between 11.96 and 12.08 ounces, or what's the likelihood that a can of soda has a volume that's 12.08 ounces or less? Okay, so now let's bump up to chapter seven. Okay, so I'm gonna scooch this down just a bit. I wanna leave our, our distribution from the population in view. All right, 
So now it says 16 cans are to be selected and the soda volume will be determined for each one. Let X bar denote the sample mean. Okay. So now I'm on an X bar and if you're like, okay, which distribution do I go to? There's only one distribution in here that has the X bar symbol. So you are definitely in this column, right? You want a distribution X bar right in here. So let's see if we can figure out the rules, okay? So I'm gonna say here X bar, I'll go with my three question marks, and let's see if we can figure out what's happening, okay? So the rules, the rules say the center is the same center as your population distribution. Okay, so my center up here was 12, which means my center down here will also be 12. So let me put a 12 here. Okay, now let's figure out the standard deviation. Standard deviation rule says, or you could call it the standard error, take your population distribution and divide it by the square root of your sample size. All right, my population distribution was, what was it? Not my population distribution, excuse me. My population standard deviation was 0.16 and the sample size was, what was it, 16. So I have a couple of 16s in here, but one's got a decimal point. So we got 0.16 over the square root of 16. So let's see what that is. Looks like that's 0.04. All right, and then the big question, can I put the N here? If I can put the N here, I can calculate these probabilities that are listed below, okay? But if I can't put the end here, I have to stop the problem. So let's see if we meet either one of the assumptions that I need to meet in order to put the end there. Okay, so how do we assess normality? Here we go. Let's see, is our population distribution stated as normal? Well, let's look. Did I have the end on my population? I sure did. So I can put the end here. I'm done. I get to put the end. I don't even have to worry about assumption number two. And just to point it out, even though I don't have to worry about it because I got it through assumption one, it's a good thing I got it through assumption one because the sample size wasn't 30 or higher, so the central limit theorem doesn't kick in. All right, but I, it's okay, I got it through assumption one. All right, so since the N is here, I can continue to use normal CDF. So let me move this all the way up and we're gonna calculate the same two proportions or probabilities, excuse me, but we're gonna do it off of the sampling distribution. All right, so I still want the probability that the average of these 16 cans, the average volume is between 11.96 and 12.08. So before I go calculate that number, let's go mark up our x-axis, or now let's mark up our x-bar axis. So here, this is the average volume. It's not just volume anymore. Unit's still the same, but we've got averages. The y-axis is now the probability of x bar, okay, because we're going to graph averages. 12 is still below the peak, but let me go 3 up and 3 back. It's a little bit different this time, right, because I'm not jumping by 0.16s, I'm jumping by something smaller, I'm jumping by 0.04s. So here we go for a z-score of 1. When I'm one deviation above the mean, I'm looking at 12.04. Let me add another deviation. This is 12.08. And then another would be 12 point, oops, excuse me, I've got to add 0.04. There we go, it would be 12.12. Let me go the other way and subtract some deviations. Here's the z score of negative 1. If I go z of negative 2, we're at 11.92. And then let me lose another deviation finally at 11.88. All right, so let's calculate this probability. Still want to start inside my parentheses. I've got to go from 11.96 on the x-axis to 12.08. Okay. Now, these two numbers happen to hit at integer z-score values, right? This is a z of negative one. This is a z of two. We could actually use the empirical rule to get this probability. Let me shade this in and we'll talk empirical rule and then I'm actually just gonna use normal CDF because it's, it's 
that much more accurate. Empirical rules and approximation. Normal CDF is the real deal. Okay, so let me just empirical rule this. And then like I said, I'm gonna normal CDF it. If I was gonna empirical rule it, if we remember from the empirical rule, if I split these up, right, this would have been 34% here, 34% here, and then 13.5% over here. Hey, we talked about those different areas under the curve between the integer values of z-scores. So again, when I say integer values, this was z equaling negative one, z equaling zero, z equaling one, z equaling two. So if I was going to use the empirical rule, we would have 0.34 plus 0.34 plus 0.135, so we would have about 81.5%. And we did a problem just like this when we were talking about the heights of five-year-old kids in chapter six, uh, and we still got 0.815 when we did the empirical rule, same deal, because it was the same type of problem. So if I was gonna use the empirical rule, and oops, I can't spell empirical, Give me a moment. I would say the answer was approximately 0.815. But let's go ahead and use normal CDF and take care of it. So I'm gonna say normal CDF here. And we're gonna go low, high. All right, now be careful. We're talking about X bars. Our mean was the same as our population distribution, but our standard deviation got smaller and went to 0.04. Right? So here we go. We're going to say this is normal CDF of low, high, mean, and your standard deviation now is 0.04, and you see the probability kicking in at 0.819. Right, and that actually lines up with what I'm seeing, right? It's, it's a good chunk of the area under my curve. Okay, so we got about 82% there. So I want you to also take note that this probability is a lot larger than the one we found up top. And what that's saying is, if you were looking at one can, one can might, it, it's, it's a little bit harder, or it's, it, there's only a 30% chance that one can will have between 11.96 and 12.08 ounces in the can, right, in terms of its volume, because they're a little bit more variable, right? It's not as rare for one can to have um, a soda volume of 11.68 or 12.32. There's more variability here. But as sample size increases, variability decreases. So what that's saying is, well, if you're going to look at 16 cans and look at the average, those averages don't vary that much. Because while it might be okay or might be likely if one can is this low, it's really going to be hard for 16 cans to be that low. The average of 16 cans doesn't move that much. That's why you see the spread is so much smaller, right? As sample size increases, variability decreases. All right, so then let's take a look at this next one. Let's see if we can calculate the probability that X bar would be less than or equal to 12.08. So I'm gonna go through the same shenanigans by labeling and scaling. Since I'm on the sampling distribution and I can see that with the X bar, I'm gonna label X bar. All right, I'm looking at average soda volume, still in ounces. All right, we go 12 here. Now, again, I'm, I'm not gonna mark all of these. I'm just gonna go two standard deviations up to 12.08. All right, and let me go ahead and shade that area. All right, 
so that's just a lot more area under that curve as I'm looking at that. That's like 90, 95%. But let's see what this is really equal to. So this would be normal CDF. Oh, and before I crunch this, I could still use the empirical rule here. All right, if we remember the percentile when you're two deviations up is actually the 97.5th percentile. So from the empirical rule, All right, I would guess this was about 0.975. All right, but I'm going to find out what it is for reals once we use normal CDF. So this would be low, which would be negative infinity, high. Mean of 12, standard deviation of 0.04. So let's see what we have here. I'm just going to rewrite this is negative 1 e 99 all right oops 99 not 96 there we go if i hit enter i'm looking at 0 0.977 which was pretty close to 0 0.975 but this is even more accurate okay so now we have our look at how we can handle sampling distribution problems but let's really take a look at the notation i want you to notice the x bars in these problems, right? I was looking at 16 cans at a time and looking at their average. And contrast that, because this is the chapter seven problem, contrast that with what was happening uh, up top here. And when I was looking at what was happening up top, again, I was looking at one can at a time, and I was looking at, hey, what's the soda volume for one can? That was the chapter six problem. I was drawing from the population distribution in the first part of example five. And then I started looking at the averages of these 16 cans and that was the chapter seven part of this problem. Right, so you see the X bar notations at the bottom part or the bottom half of this problem. And up here, you see the X notations, right? Population distribution, looking at X's. Sampling distribution, looking at X bars. All right, so let's flip the page and work on that a little bit more. I'll see you in a bit.